like a black sheep living in society where everybody's happy with their spoon fed false reality. CNN and Fox News spinning us a half true. One sided tweets and blurbs, two wings on the same bird. It's time for Fletcher. This truth unfiltered Some people call him the bow tie killer It's time for Fletcher Long Every story has two sides A little right, a little wrong Let freedom ring through your radio Come on, let's start the show One thing I know for certain The truth Good Friday morning to everybody here on iRadio USA and WLINY.com. Uh, we have a, you know, I love a big Friday show. We have a big Friday show. Uh, these two gentlemen are uh, a comedy team, which is a throwback to the days of Abbott and Costello, uh, uh, Martin and Lewis. Uh, and it, they are, it, they are, they really defy description. Andy Pagana and C.M. Schwartzy. They are Schwartzy and Pagana. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, Fletcher. How you doing, Fletcher? Man, Good I am. Hang- I am hanging in there. I love y'all. I've been watching your routines for the last several days. Uh, you have. You know, and Fletcher, Fletcher, we've been fans of yours since Monday. So. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know. We were you are. Yes. On your show. You, you know, you, you better, it, uh, uh, I know that after this uh, show, we're probably all three going to be calling our probation officers. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I am, how in the world, you know, you, uh, and, and Andy, you were born and raised in, in Newburgh. You're an Ulster County boy. How in the world oh, yeah. did you end up in California? Uh, I drove actually. Yeah, you take the ten. You take the ten west. <laughs> Fletcher, you should know this. You, <laughs> you know, I you know that. Like that reminds <laughs> me of my favorite, my favorite blonde joke. You know, the blonde that calls the fire department and says there's a fire, and they go, "Well, how do we get there?" And she says, "Duh, big red truck." <laughs> <laughs> We may be adding to the team today, gentlemen. It may be Schwartz and Pagana and Long. Who knows? Uh, you guys. <laughs> Why is that funny? I, I don't. I don't get the humor in that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I cover the short. You cover the long. There, there you go. The you know. I almost. I almost named the show. I almost named it the long and short of it. You know. Uh, but go ahead. That'd be good. Let's talk about your uh, your opening theme song. What do you think about it? I just want to say that uh, you got your money's worth. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, you know, I didn't pay for it. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I it's I no it, it's worth sorry. it's worthy of the nothing I paid, huh? Uh, no, I'm proud of that song. I <laughs> I am proud of that song. I think it's a good song. <laughs> no, it's fun. It, it, you did good. It, well, there was no mention of Fortune Pagana in it, but as yeah. your, well, your co-host. You're going to have to wait until the end of the show because I put you guys in into the rap version. It takes us off air. So, oh, you'll, oh, nice. you'll, yeah, yeah right. you'll be you'll be excited to uh, to ch- to check that out. Um, you guys doing comedy, and I want to talk to you about comedy. Comedy I'm oftentimes, serious. I'm getting serious now, guys. Comedy oftentimes comes from a very dark place. Um, oh. <laughs> take me to your dark. You're what, thinking of Richard Pryor's comedy. 
what's your dark place? You know, <laughs> what's the from where does what's the wellspring of your comedy? What is the sort? What's the what's the derivation of pain? You've heard the statement that laughter is the derivative of pain. What's the derivation of your comedy? Everybody hates us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's a way to make fun of them. <laughs> it's a way for me and him to feel included. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Prospering, the Bible says, is uh, like heaping uh, uh, hot coals upon your enemy's head. As as today's theological, yeah. Wait, Rob it really it turns, that? yeah, it, so it says that. I swear, that's today's uh, theological. Oh, it's it's brought to you by Meeks and Meeks attorneys and Schwartzy and Pagana. Uh, it does say, <laughs> that. Uh, you know, you you can see what a whore I am, right? You know, like I'm selling everything. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 pushing the Bible on it. Oh, yeah, you like that. I didn't know it was a religious know, show. The Bible's a big deal. I know that everybody discusses the Bible. You guys, and I saw your review of Mel Gibson. Um, oh, yeah, our tribute. It was our tribute. <laughs> the tribute. The tribute to Mel Gibson. Um, now, I talk think that to was like, how, how many years ago was that? Did you, did you see the year on that? Do you remember? Was that 2000, 2009? 2009, I believe, we did that video. And I'd like to say... Officially, that video worked because Mel Gibson is back. <laughs> he is he's back. back. He's back. What did he think he's of back, your baby. review? Have you heard from Mel he Gibson about that review? Has, has he said anything to you about it? Well, his lawyer has got something to us. The cease and desist so, letter denoted that he didn't like it. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> we have not heard officially from him, but we're working on that. We actually wrote a part for him in our uh, a pilot for our series. Called Gangbusters. Yeah, we we think he'd be he'd be great as our boss, Mr. Scheister. He's well, dream casting. You know, guys, he's really not getting a lot of work right now, so I don't know that he should turn his nose up at this. You know what I'm he's saying? Right. You're right. I mean, this, he loves comedy. He loves uh, the Three Stooges for sure. So he would love our kind of comedy. How much? Right what's there. what are your? Yeah, he would. What are your major influences? I mean, I know that Martin and Lewis and Abbott and Costello, but who, who are your major comedic influences? Oh, comedic influences. I was going to say coffee was our major influence. <laughs> <laughs> I like your You know, the pretty woman, it comes out in varying degrees of undress to, 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 to fill up your coffee cup. I got to get me one of those. I've not, I've not. Oh, written, Miss Malone. I, oh, you know, Miss I got, Malone, yeah. yeah. Wait, you mean, wait, you mean that dog face, Miss Malone? <laughs> Yeah, the one that don't be broad. You know, the one the one who puts on glasses and is morphed into a dog. That's right. Yeah. You uh, can't stand her. You could have her. She's the worst. The worst. Uh, I'll take her. Uh, sold. Do anything right. First row. Um, she got the job the hard way, if you know what I mean. She well, <laughs> yes. Uh, she's very hard on you guys, I hear. You're hard on her one. Oh. I have to say, I'm, I'm right with you guys. I fit right in. What are your influences? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, as Pagana said, uh, Abbott and Costello. For sure. The Three Stooges. Yeah, Laurel and Hardy. Wheeler and Woolsey. Uh, yeah, Biffle and Schuster. No, we hate Biffle and Schuster. <laughs> Do you know about Biffle and Schuster? They're our rifles. Oh, are they really? They're coming on. Un- right now. Incidentally, incidentally. 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 You. Incidentally, I'd like to announce that Biffle and Schuster will be on Monday on the lot. I'm joking. Like, no! <laughs> no! And a very special long version today that will air immediately after this show, Biffle and Schuster. Please join us. <laughs> Today's show is brought to you by Biffle and Schuster. Yeah, we found another 1940s comedy team that lives in our neighborhood called Biffle and Schuster. We yeah. were so angry. They're doing movies. <laughs> there, goes, there goes the neighborhood is all I can say. Total ripoff. Exactly. Total ripoff. Mark Brothers for sure. Mark Brothers think, are a huge influence. Oh yeah. I think you got. In fact, you guys were first. You, you you were first. Yeah, uh, we were first before Biffle and Schuster, or before the Mark Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Mark Brothers were first. How did you two get together? Uh, we met in Utah. Oh yeah. So we, twenty years ago, when we were little kids. Yeah. <laughs> You, Utah, Utah is the wellspring of comedy. I mean, there are some Everyone funny, there are some funny people in Utah. I mean, actually, everybody in Utah in that bright shining underwear is pretty funny to me. <laughs> That's true. It's like the Catskills of Gentiles. 
what made y'all decide to 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 do this together? I mean, Andy, you're kind of a Hollywood historian, really. I mean, it seems yeah. to me that yeah. you know you're you're uh, you're you know you're you had an apartment. It's hysteria. He has hysteria. Yeah, he you had an apartment lined with wrong. tapes and reels and antiquated editing equipment and contemporary and and stuff like that. I mean, what what is it? You know, you've one of your prized possessions is a bundle of wood that was a prop in the Indiana Jones film. What makes you such a Hollywood historian? You know all this. Yeah, well, that's uh, you've done your research, boy. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, you know I am a professional. Ta- I know I, I know it might not be much of a show, but I take I take it very seriously. <laughs> I don't know. Ever since I was a little kid, I've just been fascinated with Hollywood and with uh, Hollywood, you know, kind of royalty and Hollywood history. And uh, we started the uh, kind of we did this like Georgia began online museum where we take this uh, kind of rare stuff in our collection. I don't, I don't, I don't think that we put that out. I'm not sure, um, but we, uh, it, you know, old photos are one of a kind. You know, we have the script to Stanley Kramer, Stanley Kramer's actual script for the Mad, 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 Mad World, uh, Indiana Jones Gloves. We have, yeah, the firewood actually that's sat in his. Bedroom in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which uh, somebody donated to us. <laughs> Wait, which which movie? <laughs> the Crystal Skull. We're collecting things from the Crystal Skull. Well, <laughs> we think what we can get. <laughs> I, I want to talk to you about what had to have been a crushing moment for you two. You were Are there. You the Crystal Skull. No, no, you were there when Peter O'Toole got his handprints oh. in the cement at Grauman's Chinese Theater. And he wouldn't give yeah. you. Anything. How how did you guys ever recover from being snubbed by Peter O'Toole? <laughs> we haven't. We're still mad about it. I mean, you we guys are trying. To, you're time. you're trying to get Pete work in the next Francis Ford Coppola film, and this dude's not even going to grant you an interview. I mean, do, does he understand? I, know. <laughs> I that was a hard one. I mean, we were lucky enough to get. First of all, we love Peter O'Toole. He was just. One of the greatest actors of all time, you know, uh, most nominated uh, actor for an Oscar who's, who hasn't won eight times. Um, and uh, yeah, we were there. We were we had a chance to, when he was getting his hands put in the Hollywood cement. We were really hoping to get even thirty seconds with them. Yeah, and have to say hi to us. There are names on camera. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Just something. We had a huge painting of him that we brought. I- I love y'all's style, and for everybody listening, what what Schwartzy and Pagana does is they basically show up early and bum rush a big star is what they do. I mean, it's beautiful. It, it's beautiful. I mean, these, these guys are like, who in the hell are these two dudes? And you're running up there sticking a mic in their face. It's beautiful. Love it. Two oh, yeah. Two mics. Two mics. And, and half the time, we end up just arguing in front of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one yeah. nice thing I can say about what you do, though, is you don't look starstruck, which tells the viewer that you've you've been to the end zone before. You, you, you see what I'm saying? We're concerned. We've yet to meet a star. We have yeah. been struck by one, though. Oh yeah. I mean, that's true. You know, you interview you interview Francis Ford Coppola, and the first thing you do when he walks away is say, "Who was that guy?" Yeah. <laughs> He's a Who, the guy. Hell? He's a Who in the hell is that guy? Yeah, we have people I mean, looking at that film, like like the Zapruder film. I mean, your your name is Pagana. You're probably a Python. You know, he he probably oh, needs to put you. Huh? Yeah, we're actually both Python. The uh, oh, Python. Schwartzy's Jewish. Come on, Schwartzy's as no. Python as Meyer Lansky. I'm Come not on. a Jew. I'm you're not a Jew with a name like Schwartzy, then you are absolutely, you know what you're doing. You're, you're, you're committing a fraud. You know, I don't know that I want to talk to a comedian. that's not Jewish. I mean, what kind of a damn comedian? Yeah. We use it. We use it so we could tell two jokes and not get too. Involved. Yeah. I do it all the time. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And if it's too broad, it works. Hey, that's brilliant. too. That's, hey, that's brilliant. too. <laughs> I got to ask you, Pagana, Pagana, I got to ask yeah. you this question because this resonated with me. You were once quoted as saying, there is always such a fine. Yeah, somebody quoted this son of a bitch. I can't believe it. Uh, there is always such a fine line between success and failure. And I'm never quite sure 
on what side of that line I am teetering. I love that because I don't know. I'm pretty sure on what side of the line I'm teetering, and it's on the failure side, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, right now? <laughs> now that you have us on your show, you're failing. I was doing great. I was doing great until today. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was I was headed in a certain direction, and then I decided to fall off the cliff. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm kidding you guys. Yeah. You're wonderful. Pagana, I tell, think tell me, Pagana, about that, about the fine line and your ability to soldier on, even though you're not sure all the time on which side of that line you fall. Well, I'm not sure what, what context that quote was in, but like I think, you know, like today or Schwartz and Pagan is a perfect example. You know, uh, you know, we're successful in that. I think we've created a, a pretty creatively successful comedy team. It's something very different. It works. It works for at least for me and for Schwartz, and we have a lot of fun doing it. And within our little circle, um, uh, you know, people know us. They ask us to do things. We just got asked this morning to do some commercial for. Do you see that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For some finance company. Yeah. Yeah, little stuff. But you know, we we haven't achieved any kind of level of real success. Um, and and I think you know, depending on how you judge success, is it just financial? Is it just creative? Or how happy you are? Or or what? And I I think you know I'm probably just talking about the, the balance of, of that, what, uh, you know, what's important to you and what makes you happy and what, you know, what success really is. And I, you know, I, I guess I, I don't really ever know, you know, some people look at me, I think like, a, like I've gone nowhere. And I think other people look at me like you've done something. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know who to believe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this from, uh, you know, I don't judge success by, um, uh, money says the broke guy uh (laughs) you know that obviously could that obviously couldn't be in my criteria or or my 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 inner my uh self uh evaluation would 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 uh would not be very good but i i think that i think first of all that whatever you're doing is is sort of a craft particularly if you're in the arts and you guys are so quick-witted uh you interplay so well um, and uh, your your the slapstick. I love the old comedy teams, and we don't see them much anymore. And I was wondering, they're dead. I, why? Sure they're dead. But but what happened to the comedy? No, you guys, no, you guys are it. But I mean, what happened? Hollywood to Forever you, Cemetery. You and you and Shyster and Blooster or whoever your competition is. But what what happened? To, what happened to the comedy team? Yeah, no, you're right. There's not a lot of uh, modern day comedy teams, and uh, that's kind of the reason. Like, I guess part of the reason why we we stand out in that we do that. And when we've done a few live shows, like actually at comedy clubs, it's uh, it's really interesting it watching the crowd react to it because they've never seen it. I think people like they uh, subconsciously they go, "Oh, that's kind of like those old people I saw on TV a long time ago, thinking of Abbott and Costello or something," and so they accept it, but they've never seen it live. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun that way to bring that back and hopefully that will get people to like dig up old, you know, uh, classic comedy stuff. One of the things that y'all have online is like a Hollywood museum. What inspired, what inspired you to do that? I, I think, uh, you, you know, we love, we love movies. We love Hollywood and, um, you know, personally, I've been collecting crap since I was uh, a, a little kid, and I, you know, I wanted to share it. You know, we, Schwartz and I, we, uh, we have an idea for uh, a series and a show or a movie called Schwartz and Pagana Save Hollywood. And it, it really kind of came about, I think, you know, right when Peter O'Toole died, because we actually tried to get him, we tried to hire him to narrate something we had shot, and it didn't work. He had already retired, and I think he was really sick, but we don't know for sure. And then we tried to get Omar Sharif, and we offered him an obscene amount of money. <laughs> but it didn't happen. Omar, Omar was a little pricey, I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, he was, and he didn't do it, and then he passed away. And, you know, we talked about we wanted to – our goal is to try to get some of these guys before they go and get them, 
to do, you know, something, one last bit with us and trying to introduce them to a new, new audience and to talk with them and work with them. We did Marvin Kaplan, who you might not know by name, but he just passed away, uh, I think, a couple months ago. And he was, uh, he was uh, one of the voices in Top Dog. He was at, uh, Catherine Hepburn uh, discovered him. And he was in Adam Gribb was his first movie with Spencer Tracy. And he was in that famous a uh, little segment with Jonathan Winters and it's a mad, 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 mad world. Hey guys, we, I've got to go. I've got to go to break. Okay, so y'all hold well, this thought. He's in the middle of a story, Fletcher. I, 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 you know, guys, I got advertisers. I don't know what do you want from me. I got to go to break. I love, I love you, show. guys. We'll, I, I can't we'll the break. I can't give the money back, so I got to go to break. We're getting the All long right, well, version of Schwar of of Schwartzy and Pagana here on I Radio USA. Moving to Clarksville, being stationed at Fort Campbell, or just moving to the Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky areas? Go see my friend Matt McWhirter in the mortgage division of f and Bank. Matt and f and are in the American dream business, and they want to help your family achieve the American dream. They are located at 15 different Clarksville, Tennessee locations, or you can call Matt McWhirter at 931 245 4274. Reach out to Matt McWhirter on email at matt, M A T T, dot M C W H I R T E R at myfmbank.com and ask him how you can apply for your home loan right online. Contact Matt McWhirter at FM Bank for your home loan or refinancing needs at FM Bank, member FDIC an equal housing lender. Are you moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky? Well, then you need to know the hottest real estate agent in the Tuckasee markets is Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky, getting stationed at Fort Campbell, or being transferred to another base from Fort Campbell and need to sell your home, Felicia Long Grant aligns herself with champions and delivers excellence. Ask her about the hottest properties now available in the market at Wellington Fields and the soon-to-be Stonehurst development. Call Felicia Long at 931-206-4980. That's 931-206-4980. Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams, aligning herself with champions and delivering excellence. From criminal defense to contracts, from divorce to child custody, from military law to asset forfeiture. At the law office of Kimberly Turner and Associates, we know that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good people just get caught up in bad situations and need someone to navigate them through a frightening and daunting system. The law office of Kimberly Turner and Associates will stand beside you and guide you through your most trying ordeals. Call her office at 931 572 1134 or check out the full array of offered services by going to kturnerlaw.com. That's the law office of Kimberly Turner and Associates, 931 572 1134, because they are the law firm who cares. This is Fletcher Long. And we all go through times when we need a little help from a friend. Some of us have seen the blue lights in the rear view. Others of us have been lucky. Who are you going to call when your luck runs out, when your relationship sours, or when another problem arises necessitating a lawyer's help? Here's a hint. It better be the very best. If in that situation, the decision to me is clear, I am calling attorney Lynn Morton. Competence, diligence, skill, and tenacity are 10 digits away. Call 931-906-0000 and ask for Lynn Morton. From divorce to DUI, from criminal defense to contract, one call does it all. 931-906-0000 gets you Lynn Morton. She'll get your ox out of the ditch and put your feet back on the street. Lynn Morton, 931 906-0000. Call her. There is nothing worse than being taken in a home buy. Should have had that property inspected and by someone with integrity who would do it thoroughly and correctly. 
should have had Z-Best Inspection Services. Don't let this happen to you. Call Z-Best Inspection Services at 931-980-5759 and ask for Bud Wink. The home is the most expensive and important investment the American family makes in a lifetime. You really don't want anyone inspecting it other than Z-Best. That is Z-Best Inspection Services, 931-980-5759. Write this down, 931-980-5759. Bud Wink is called Z-Best Inspection Services because he is Z-Best. Z-Best Inspection Services, changing the quality of home inspections one house at a time. You're getting the long version of Schwartzy and Pagana, and one of you guys was in the middle of a rambling and pointless story when we went to break, and <laughs> I was <laughs> just, just, two tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> Don't worry, he finished it. He told me the story. He finished it. it ten times. Oh, yeah. He finished it off air. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty funny so too, aren't I? I feel like I'm auditioning for the comedy team here. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, we'll call you. Thank uh, you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to meet with my talent time. agents. I saw the stick y'all did about being a talent agency. You know, with the intern. And I think uh, I I don't think that was a Schwartzian Pagana. I think that was just Pagana. But you remember the uh, you you were sitting there with the guy you were trying to pitch him uh, on uh, being his his agent, uh, and you had the good looking intern sitting over there, and you offered to let her sit in his lap. Oh, she, she's looking at her phone. You know you you know what I'm saying. That that, that was hilarious. You know, and the, okay. the guy. You know, I have an agent, and it reminded me of my agent. You know, hey man, I love what you do. Well, what about it? Do you love exactly? Well, you know, uh, the trailer. <laughs> I saw the. Trailer. <laughs> yeah, the paycheck part of it. Yeah, the paycheck. Uh, we have, uh, we have, Fletcher. We have sinus problems. Oh yeah, we can't get anyone to sinus. <laughs> <laughs> Fletcher, we have sinus problems. Oh, yeah, we can't get anyone to sinus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I heard you. Gonna, I heard you laughing at my ads during the commercial break. Now, come on, now you don't want to. Well, let's talk about the commercials because I feel like uh, you know that we should judge you on the commercials because that says something about your audience. All your commercials were like bail bonds, people, <laughs> lawyers for DUIs, and you know. Uh, That's right. Uh, and that you know, things like yes, that. yes, we have the same audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, want of, we, we want in on this. Yeah, we want to do your commercial. Yeah. This is for Democratic gentlemen. I bring you the Schwartzy and Pagana Nation. That you you didn't know that I'm, <laughs> I'm actually the president of your fan club. Yes. Uh, perfect for We're you. We're in the South. Is that who you're talking to? We're in Kentucky. Uh, well, I'm in Kentucky. I'm in Kentucky. We don't. We yes, we don't let Jews in Kentucky. Well, uh, <laughs> So you still have that policy, all right? Yes, yes we're very anti-Semitic. You know, I had Scott Schwartz on, and uh, uh, he is a great guy. Yeah, he's a great big Jewish actor out there, and I think he lives. He doesn't live in Hollywood, but he was he was in the uh, um, Ocean's Eleven, uh, Twelve series. He was Bruiser, you know, the guy that was supposed to beat up George Clooney, that guy. Well, anyway. Oh yeah. Everything I said. Yeah, we call him I mean, Big Scorgy. Yeah, this guy was a big. This guy was really Jewish. I mean, he was everything I really said. Jewish? Really wow. Jewish? Really Jewish? Was he? Let's see. Did he bring his dreidel? <laughs> uh, you know, he, 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 uh, everything I said. It was what are you? Some sort of anti-Semite? I thought I was on a Seinfeld episode. You know, and I think it popped off with the anti-Semitic bastard at one time. I don't know what yeah, I. Did well, you know how you just. You, you you could stop that right away by just saying yes, yes, yes. <laughs> just, just come to it. Yes, yes, that's yeah, what I. Can't ask anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what? Who do you think? Uh, the well, anyway, thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, it was nice having you. I appreciate you coming. Uh, who do you uh, think is the, is the most famous? Uh, who who were the people you've interviewed uh, that you thought to yourself, "I cannot believe I'm I'm interviewing this this person." Uh-huh. Oh, Coppola? Yep. It's, I couldn't it's, believe that was Coppola. 
I still don't believe it. I don't believe it, I don't believe it was. Uh, um, oh, well, we'll uh, uh, who did we talk to? Wait, we, there were some good ones. Um, well, you know, some of them, then we just don't record, so we can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, right, right. like uh, Tom Cruise. That's and, like the fish uh, story, isn't it? Man, you should have seen this fish that I caught and released. It was. <laughs> Oh, Spielberg interview. It went for three hours, but uh, most of them are the Mexican versions of famous movie stars. That's yeah, true. Like I, Mexican Tom Cruise. Yeah. You know, I saw oh, yeah. Cruise the RGB. I saw you yeah. guys. No, the that was Ted Cruz. Sorry, that yeah. was Ted Cruz. The Mexican yeah. Ewan McGregor. <laughs> you know, you guys were trying to put you. I think you were trying to pass this off as Tom Cruise, but the dude was like seventeen years old, and there's. <laughs> but he did look like Tom. <laughs> No, we, uh, we talked to uh, Rachel Nichols, who we're supposed to have lunch with, maybe today. What? Oh, was, I forgot. Was this in a film uh, that you guys uh, produced about? It, it had some really hot woman-on-woman fight action in it, didn't it? Oh, oh yeah. We were in that. We were cast in that. You're talking about some girl? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I know what you're talking about. I'm about Ray. You're talking about Ray. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get to work with one of our favorite yeah. directors. Oh yeah, yeah. Josh Waller. Oh, that was the name of Yeah, we played. Uh, yeah, weren't we you the one? Didn't didn't you get a producer credit for that? Isn't that right? In Rays, didn't you get a producer credit for that? I I did. I, I yeah. I yeah, got, but he got it the old fashioned way. He was sleeping with the director. <laughs> yes, I in Hollywood. It had Zoe Bell and R. J. Uh, Mitt and and Richard. Zoe. Is Zoe. It's pronounced Zoe. Zoe. Well, I'm in. Zoe. We don't have names like this, you know. It's well, like, it's, oh, no, I'm no. only saying this because she will kick your ass. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, I, so we're trying to help you. <laughs> hey, it, woman. And, and, we, and, did a, we did another video. We did another little short with her that nobody's seen yet. We haven't put it out, but you know the old uh, Niagara Falls routine. You, you've seen it in the Three Stooges and Abbott and Costello and I Love Lucy. Yes, slowly yes. I turn. You know it? Yes, I'm familiar with it. Yes. Yeah, we actually shot, we did shoot a version of that. But that was another thing. We wanted to kind of like bring back some of these old routines for a modern audience. You guys shot a virgin? Nobody's seen it. Well, we shot a, we shot a virgin. <laughs> yeah, but we're not talking about that right now. See, Although guys. Get us the number for some of those lawyers who are advertising. I am panning. I am panning. <laughs> There's, a lot. Lot. <laughs> There's no two lawyers that get I'm so down with you guys. You want a Jewish lawyer? We don't have any of those. I know. You're going to have you're going to have to have a Yehud lawyer, which means you're going to prison. Uh, you don't have any. <laughs> Are y'all really having lunch with Rachel Nichols today? I think it, we're supposed to, right? She wants to. Is it a Rachel Nichols? She wants to, but we're, you know, we're <laughs> Is it the real one? Is it the real one or a lookalike? Or? No, the real one. The real yeah. one. The one from Conan and Star Trek. Oh. And Schwartz and Bagana interview Rachel Nichols. <laughs> Wait, Rachel Nichols, she is in Rays in the opening scene. How did y'all? Yes, that's right. And you also did. Uh, you also did uh, another project that had a lot of the same people, and it didn't have Rachel Nichols called The Devil's Inc. Oh, I did that one. That was Pagana. I produced it, and uh, and actually, we, Devil's Inc. No, that was gonna be the. That was the motorcycle movie. Oh wait, what's it? You're thinking of Parlor? Oh yeah. Wait, which one are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about The Devil's made. Inc. Zoe. No, Zoe. I never got made. Huh? About maybe Anarchy Parlor? Is that oh, I got a yeah, I got a screener of that. What that that never got made? Am I like no. the only Wait, one? Wait, <laughs> hey, the how were we se- Huh? Oh, you guys were. I, I saw the trailer. I mean, you were great. Okay. Oh, that's where we live. We live in a trailer, but it's not ours. <laughs> oh yeah, don't tell the people that. I'm working. You were, you know, I'm working in your line from the agency. No, I saw the trailer. You were great. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, have you watched our movie review show? Yes, love it. love it. Freaking love it. Your movie review show is fantastic. You're like Siskel and Ebert with a sense of humor. Um, it's really yeah. Cool. And blackface. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey. A lot more blackface than they ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not a lot more than they did, but a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. <laughs> there's got to be, there's got to be people. Have you ever run across a star that was offended? Oh yeah, by- it was a big problem. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell I want to hear that story. I want to hear paralyzed. about uh, 
that really got offended by your uh, by by your review. Oh, did people get offended? By well, you know, the fans the fans really get mad about our reviews. <laughs> oh it's, yeah, if you look at our comments on, on our YouTube pages, yeah, I saw that. some of them. There was one from a guy in Utah that says this sucks, and uh, oh, that's the nice one. <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, these dudes are hacks. I, that was that was somebody's mother. I can't remember, but yeah, no, they get they get real nasty. I can't say it on the radio, but they say horrible things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and only some of them are true. <laughs> but, when, but Sporty's really good. Sporty does most of the commenting back, and he's really he's really good. They're my favorite part of the reviews is is uh, dealing with the irate fans. <laughs> It's easy to, to uh, you know, poke the trolls. <laughs> they are an easily poked group. Yeah. But you, you never, the bar yeah. You, <laughs> I'm talking about our fans. You guys never had a star uh, call you up and go, "Hey, I didn't much care for your, uh, 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 well, your." We didn't have a star ever call us, but two things we we we've, we've upset two that I can remember at least so far that I can remember off the top of my head. One yeah. is Tom Sorum. Who was the Matt Storm? Matt Storm, yeah, name? the drummer for Guns N' Roses. Oh, I kept calling him Tom. Yeah, maybe that's why he was mad. Yeah, well, now we know. Real Uncle Tom, though. Oh, it was the review. It instead was the dogged insistence that he had a different given name. So, yeah. well, hey, Spaghetti knows he's a Hollywood historian. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was um, we were on the red carpet. It was, goes back to Peter O'Toole. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Well, see, see what happened with Matt Sorum. Oh, we did this interview with Matt Sorum. Oh yeah, would have been one of our bigger interviews at the time. And, and he was nuts. He was no. crazy. He was nuts. He was telling us great like drug stories, rock and roll stories <laughs> on camera. We were having a lot of fun, and he was having fun. And then afterwards, the publicist said, "Absolutely not. You're not allowed to show that to anyone." Yeah, we got a big problem, publicist. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. What was the other one you were going to say? Uh, I was going to say the redhead from The Office. Oh, yeah. Okay, that one's good. But I was going to say the radio show we did. Oh, uh, yeah. We got to do that Jason one Bentley. And I'll say his name on the air. Do it. Because I don't care. Oh, yeah. You know Jason Bentley? Your rival? We're colleagues. We're, 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 oh. we're huge rivals. I know him. He has never heard of me. Well, we came on the air to bury him today. This is before good. our characters. I am so down. Yeah, we were- I, I put it on him. So before we were Schwartz and Pagana, we were just Schwartz and Pagana. Yeah, you know, so you see the difference. And yes. we would do this uh, mu- music uh, talk show. We were on a we were on the L.A. Music Blog. Yeah. And it was called, so the L.A.M.B., L.A. Music Blog. We were Schwartz and Pagana on oh, the lam. And we would talk to uh, music people. And we would never really talk about music. <laughs> you, you could see how that could happen. Yes, and I so got we, it. Somehow yeah. we got an interview with Jason Bentley in the KCRW studio. And wow, that went horrible. And we were like, we were warned. Like it was the first time we were warned before we went in. Don't do your normal stick. Oh, yeah. Just go and interview. Me, 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 me. Well, like, have you seen what we do? Why would you ask us to come in and then tell us not to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please. Like lions and you just put a fresh meat piece of steak in front of us. Oh, yeah. Needless to say, we were banned from showing that. Um, <laughs> although we did. We didn't no, we out. didn't ever put it out, did we? Oh, we did it privately. Well, well, what we did was, yeah, we did it privately. Yeah, we did it privately. Yeah, we... Anyway, anyway, and then the, the woman from the office. So we were on the red carpet at Turner Classic Movie Film Festival where Peter O'Toole, the day before, had his hands in the cement, and they were opening, I think it was Beckett, um, or maybe Lion in Winter. I can't remember. No, 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 no. It was... Uh, it, it was a different movie. It wasn't Peter O'Toole. Now, it was now, the wait, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to interject. Now, the woman from The Office, are we talking about the super good-looking one that was Jim's wife, or are we talking about the kind of plain-looking one that the, was the, the, uh, the red-headed, the alcoholic one? The red-headed. Oh, the alcoholic, the alcoholic floozy. Got it. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we had we were doing really good with interviews. I think that time we had gotten like, uh, uh, did we do Kim Novak? No. There was, there was some big, we got some big, we got some big names. Big names. Who was Melanie Griffith's mother? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Tippy Hedrick. Oh, we got Tippy Hedrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, we weren't, you, weren't allowed to, you weren't allowed to air any of them because the publicist union sued you. But but you got some good interviews. Well, I wouldn't <laughs> want to get into the Ben Mankiewicz situation <laughs> right now. All right. Hey, Alec, Wal- Alec Baldwin walked by. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't be interviewed. He wouldn't be interviewed but, by anybody, though. But so we've been trying to get the, the woman from the office and the redhead shows up. 
and we've been waiting for her, waiting. She's taking forever. And just as she shows up, I think you noticed, right, or the camera yeah. guy did, Peter O'Toole walks by. Yeah, Peter O'Toole. And we just, like, as soon as she comes to our, uh, get interviewed, we notice Peter O'Toole, and we just, like, Peter O'Toole! <laughs> and she was so offended that we, you know, chose somebody over her. Yeah. And the video is hilarious because she just looks so nasty at us and just pretty much runs away from us. The public did for so <laughs> many. It was the verbal equivalent of just grabbing her face and shoving it out of the way. For Peter O'Toole. But you know what? Which we would have thought. She's got to understand. That's Peter O'Toole. All right, you were on The Office. She should have been there with us. She should have been, she should have been yelling. Yeah. I mean, this guy was nominated for eight Academy Awards, and you played a, a, yeah. a drunk, uh, loose woman on a sitcom. I mean, <laughs> please. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, guys, I hate, I hate to tell you this, but we got to go to commercial break. Uh, we're gonna. Oh, come on! Come on we're guys, gotta pay. Yeah, yeah, we know your commercials. We gotta, go to we gotta go for coffee. Yeah, we're gonna go for coffee. We'll, we'll go to break, and you guys can just do the commercials. I'm sure you got them by now. You're getting the long version of Schwartzy and Pagano on iRadio USA. Moving to Clarksville, being stationed at Fort Campbell, or just moving to the Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky areas, go see my friend Matt McWhorter in the mortgage division of F and M Bank. Matt and F&M are in the American dream business and they want to help your family achieve the American dream. They are located at 15 different Clarksville, Tennessee locations or you can call Matt McWhorter at 931-245-4274. Reach out to Matt McWhorter on email at matt, M-A-T-T, dot M-C-W-H-I-R-T-E-R at myfmbank.com and ask him how you can apply for your home loan right online. Contact Matt McWhorter at FNM Bank for your home loan or refinancing needs at FNM Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Are you moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky? Well, then you need to know the hottest real estate agent in the Tuckasee markets is Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky, getting stationed at Fort Campbell, or being transferred to another base from Fort Campbell and need to sell your home, Felicia Long Grant aligns herself with champions and delivers excellence. Ask her about the hottest properties now available in the market at Wellington Fields and the soon-to-be Stonehurst development. Call Felicia Long at 931-206-4980. That's 931-206-4980. Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams, aligning herself with champions and delivering excellence. From criminal defense to contracts, from divorce to child custody, from military law to asset forfeiture, at the law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, we know that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good people just get caught up in bad situations and need someone to navigate them through a frightening and daunting system. The Law Office of Kimberly Turner & Associates will stand beside you and guide you through your most trying ordeals. Call her office at 931-572-1134 or check out the full array of offered services by going to kturnerlaw.com. That's the Law Office of Kimberly Turner & Associates. 931-572-1134 because they are the law firm who cares. This is Fletcher Long, and we all go through times when we need a little help from a friend. Some of us have seen the blue lights in the rear view. Others of us have been lucky. Who are you going to call when your luck runs out, when your relationship sours, or when another problem arises necessitating a lawyer's help? Here's a hint. It better be the very best. If in that situation, the decision to me is clear, I am calling attorney Lynn Morton. Competence, diligence, skill, and tenacity are 10 digits away. Call 931-906-0000 and ask for Lynn Morton. From divorce to DUI, from criminal defense to contract, one call does it all. 931-906-0000 gets you Lynn Morton. She'll get your ox out of the ditch and put your feet back on the street. Lynn Morton, 
931-906-0000. Call her. There is nothing worse than being taken in a home buy. Should have had that property inspected and by someone with integrity who would do it thoroughly and correctly. Should have had Z-Best Inspection Services. Don't let this happen to you. Call Z-Best Inspection Services at 931-980-5759 and ask for Bud Wink. The home is the most expensive and important investment the American family makes in a lifetime. You really don't want anyone inspecting it other than Z-Best. That is Z-Best Inspection Services, 931-980-5759. Write this down, 931-980-5759. Bud Wink is called Z-Best Inspection Services because he is Z-Best. Z-Best Inspection Services, changing the quality of home inspections one house at a time. You're getting the long version of Schwartzy and Pagana. And uh, when we went to break, I think we actually broke without breaking in the middle of a story, but I, I was looking up Zoe Bell, whose name I mispronounced and shouldn't have, and I don't want to piss off anybody that was in Xena Warrior Princess. You know? Too late. <laughs> Too late, huh? She's coming for me. Let's see her find Hopkinsville, Kentucky, because God knows I, I barely found it. So. <laughs> Shorty tried to get in Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> <laughs> he, did he really? I mean, what, he, he couldn't handle the fight scene, or what, what happened there, Schwartzy? I heard the screen test was hilarious. Wait, I, heard, I, I heard he got his ass kicked all over the stage in the street in the screen test. And <laughs> um, Hold on, we want you to meet our baristas. We're getting coffee right now. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, where are y'all right now? We're at Gelato Bar in Studio City. Okay. Welcome to the yeah. Long Version, coming to you from Long Island, New York. All right, we're getting coffee. They don't want to talk. Want to talk? Tell them they're they're serving two very famous people. Is this helping you with the ladies, Any? Look, are you got- Fletcher, I know that we have to do your show and everything, but we still have to live our lives. We are, have are a you career got- and we have things to do. So we're taking you with us. We're walking down the street getting coffee. And if you took a break, Fletcher, we're taking a break. Yeah, we're taking a break. So we're not talking for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> You're going to take your break with me on air. See, see how talented hey, I am. You're feeling better. People paying us not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Watch your ratings go up as we stop talking. Hey, it, it's my damn competitor, isn't it? That guy's paid. He got to you during the commercial break and said he'd pay you to just be silent. Um, <laughs> let me hey, ask do you. Do you have listeners? Do you have people that can call in? I have no idea. I, I, I hope I do. <laughs> you know, I, I hope I have listeners. That is my hope. Hey, let me ask you this question. I am a huge Simpsons fan, and Pagana, it is my understanding that you have Buzz Cola. You may even have as much of a whole shelf of it. Would you consider... Would you you consider... understand the Gordy Pagana archives are very extensive. And we have a a warehouse full of stuff like that. Is there any... Buzz Cola is cool. Hey, no, Any, you gotta try it. Please do just beer. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, is that, it, any is way it. you guys would send me uh some buzz cola? In any way at all. We can get you some buzz cola. Sure. Yeah, why not? Awesome. I'll I'll uh, you know, and later on. Yes, yeah. a tie pin. I gotta get the tie pin. Those things yeah, well that's how Steve Joyner wears it. Yes. Oh yeah. Who, um contractually who, we have to mention Steve Joyner. Who Steve is Joyner, Steve Joyner, Steve Joyner. Thank he, you, Steve Joyner. Is, Thank you, Steve Joyner, for getting me out of jail. And Andy, you're an oil painter, is my understanding. I am right? an oil painter. Oh, an oil painter. Yeah. I yes, I am. I, I am an oil painter, correct. How does that how do you is is does the oil painting just just that just doesn't pay or how do you go from oil painter to comedic genius? 
I'm sorry, what? Uh, I've got to ask this so many times a day. And could you go back? Well, first of all, let's just start with nobody ever believed it's actually me painting. I've been told, I, I thought your only talent was annoying people. <laughs> And I've, I've, seen, I've seen some of your work, and it's really, it's, it's, it's remarkable. It really is. Thank you. It's part of that pain that you were talking about earlier. That's what you're you know, you got a day job. i got to fill my days with something. you got the dark, <laughs> that's your dark place that, you know. That is, yeah, that is my, although my favorite painting, my favorite paintings are of Schwartz and Pagana. I did, I did this giant, I think it was six foot by eight foot movie poster in the style of 1940s movies of Schwartz and Pagana meet Frankenstein. Yeah. Schwartz has got like three huge Schwartz and Pagana paintings in his office. And this one, who was the writer? The writer of Cold Miner's Daughter came in? Tom Rickman. Tom Rickman came yeah. in and looked at the, didn't really, you know, he's an older gentleman and uh, <laughs> we're big fans, by the way. And he came in and he saw the, the giant, uh, you know, Schwartz and Pagana meet Frankenstein poster and didn't put two and two together. And just looked at it and goes, wow, classic movie. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say something like, hey, I saw that at the theater. I remember when I saw that at the theater. <laughs> exactly. It does trick people. People think it's an old movie poster. Yeah. Now, now Schwartzy, I've got to know, what is your day job? Are you in waste disposal or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a waste. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I should mention this on the air. <laughs> I own a rabbit farm. Oh, yeah, how's business? It's hopping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm in the coffee business. Oh, yeah? I'm, yeah. It's a grind. <laughs> I'm, we're, and ladies and gentlemen, we are here all week. Please, please tip your waiter. <laughs> uh, so, so what is, Those so what's, our only two jokes. We can't be here yeah. all week. <laughs> what's, what's the day job? I got to know. What do you do, hey, Schwartz? I work at the I work at the American Film Institute, AFI. It's a, uh, people should know it, but I don't know if everyone in Kentucky does. It's a, it's a film school and a film institute. Uh, you know, it started out 19, in the 60s. It was the first, like, federally funded, like, film education. You know, it, when they decided that film should be an art form taken seriously, the government started this. And now it's, a, uh, it's an MFA program, uh, a two-year film school. That's where I work. I educate kids. Even though these kids are like uh, average age of 28. Man, that is like a scary proposition. And uh, in Kentucky, we still think that California is part of Mexico. So <laughs> I, doubt, I doubt we know about it. <laughs> Parts of it are. Parts of it are. Have you been to Van Nuys? <laughs> we just, we I just. That, uh, when I was saying that Mel Gibson is back, the AFI just uh, put out their 10 best films of the year list, and Hacksaw Ridge is on it. So, Mel Gibson might, yeah. be, might be coming to AFI very soon. And Let me, I, work. Oh, we're getting up. I've got to ask a question because, you know, you guys are it's obviously... Job. Have, it's my job. And you guys are obviously Hollywood insiders, or at least you're yes. there and I'm here. So, I mean, that's it. You're actually inside the corporal limits of Hollywood. Let me ask you this question. Um, Mel, Mel Gibson... Uh, yeah. is yeah, I, yeah I, is he uh, is he crazy or do they just depict him that way because they don't like his politics? Misunderstood. Misunderstood. I mean, define crazy. Like, we're this is a, a town full of artists, right? Like, so right. the people are passionate. Have you ever been wronged by you know your Russian girlfriend? <laughs> I yeah. know. Yes. Yeah. Who has it? Look, Took my wallet. Know. Yes. Our, our so female cop. Yeah. Who has it? Officer Sugar Yes. Shane Black told us once, you know Shane Black is the, the writer of Lethal Weapon, uh, Iron Man 3, the nice guys that was out. You know Shane Black? Right, yes. Got him. Okay. So he knows Mel Gibson because he wrote, he created the Lethal Weapon franchise. And he told us that anything someone says while they're blackout drunk should not be held against them. And, and, and he said, he said, this is his quote, he said, as a, an alcoholic, I can say this, that that should not be held against you. And, you know, you know Mel had a, a little, he had a couple drinks. Did you just out Shane Black as an alcoholic? 
No, he he's an admitted alcoholic. I mean, okay. an addict, I should say. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, he's not. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey. Uh, totally sober. Because we're all in bed when we had that conversation. So it seems <laughs> That's very personal. That's pillow talk. That's pillow talk. It's very important. Very apparent. We'll cut it. We'll cut it from the produced version. Uh, so, I'm sorry. We're airing it. It's going out to all eight of my listeners. There, all, my my mother and and the rest of my relatives now know this, and and who they tell, I am not responsible. Uh, <laughs> no, but I, it, but it is true. The guy the guy had some. He's got some issues. I mean, who hasn't? You know, and he's. Uh, He's a creative. He's brilliant as a creative. He's a brilliant actor. Um, great director. Great director. Great. I, I've never heard any bad stories about him. People who have worked with him. Yeah. You know that he's ever discriminated against anybody, even women. Like you know, that he said bad things about women, but like if you talk to Jodie Foster, like she, like she, she loves a supporter him. of him. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. loves him. Well, and actually, if you go back to Robert Downey Jr. when Robert Downey Jr. was having all his drug troubles, and I mean, yeah. how many times did he get arrested? There was Mel Gibson. Who supported him? Supported him, took him in, and, and like yeah, took care of him. Well, is it fair to say uh, that you're you know you're out in Hollywood, you've got all the money That's in the world, you, pro- you probably have more money than you can spend. Not not you two, but other people in Hollywood. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> have more money than they could ever spend. Does that will that lend itself to uh, a drug culture, perhaps a party culture, and maybe even instances, you know, where you're being watched all the time, you're bound to say something that is going to be inappropriate. Yeah, Aren't it's you? getting worse and worse now that everybody has, uh, you know, phones on. And I'm saying this as Pagana is uh, Facebook living right now. <laughs> He's got a phone <laughs> in my face. As you're rushing in all the stars and sticking a mic in their face, but yeah. Oh yeah, right. You can never slip up now. Like, and I mean, come on, let's sure. Come on, the things you say when you're not on the air, right? Oh, unbelievable. I mean, the things that we've said just on the phone to each other could. Uh, right. There's no, there's no, there's no <laughs> happen to me if if anybody heard that. I mean, if anybody knew sports in mind, like personal, real feelings, as opposed to what we say. They know they're exactly the same. <laughs> you, you know, and people hate it for it. And they, they would hate you. Cool. That's right. Uh, let me say this. I heard. I once heard argued in court by a lawyer that no man should be judged by his worst five minutes. That's pretty oh, yeah, true. Exactly. That's true. what Shane was saying about Mel Gibson. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, what are we going to brand this guy for life for this one? Yes. Uh, or two or. How many, how, many, well, how, many, how, many, how many instances? Yeah, like seven instances. I mean, like, it's a few. Alone. Yeah. We'll call it a few. It's a few. Uh, a, a guy that I'd love to interview uh, because he had an unfortunate five minutes too that he's really yeah. he's really Mike Michael Richards. I want. I'd like to interview you, Kramer. I want Kramer. Robert Blake had a had a had an unfortunate few minutes too. I'd like to interview okay. Kramer. No, his wife did. <laughs> yes, no, his wife's few minutes were much more unfortunate than Robert's. But uh, right. what about what about Michael Richards? You guys ever run into him? I don't know if I've ever run into him. I'm not. I never, never done though. You see, yeah, I think he's kind of he's like the real deal nut. Yeah. yeah. I won't speak because I don't. I've never met. Huh? Well, we have this, nothing to say. I will say though. Uh, speaking of Robert Blake, we are like three doors down from the the restaurant Vitello's in Studio City, uh, where that happened. That whole incident, that misunderstanding with his wife. Oh yeah, <laughs> we actually sat in the booth and had the same waitress he did that night. Yeah, the waitress that got subpoenaed and had to go to court to talk about it. Yeah, court he lived. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky. You're lucky they didn't roll on you. That's all I can say. <laughs> I, it is weird because this is the nicest neighborhood. Yeah, I know. You, you can't imagine any kind of drive by. That's when you know there was something shady going on. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you a guy that had a had an unfortunate five minutes. I mean, golly, that poor O.J. Simpson. Can you believe? Oh, that guy. Oh, what a. What a what a bunch of unfair things have been said about that guy, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's everybody picking on the Jews for? <laughs> right. Don't we'll pick on the Jews. Pick on the Jews. <laughs> hey, what man amongst us 
you know, hadn't had that moment. I just cut their white head off. <laughs> what man amongst us hadn't had that Or moment. hadn't wanted to. Yeah, you know, hadn't, hadn't to. had the thought true. that, you know, here's some shears and there's my wife. Who hadn't had that thought? We got to go to break, guys. We'll come back right after these what? I'm, I'm sorry, we gotta go to break. You're getting the long version of Schwartzy and Pagana. Moving to the Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky areas. Go see my friend Matt McWhirter in the mortgage division of FM Bank. Matt and FM are in the American Dream business and they want to help your family achieve the American Dream. They are located at 15 different Clarksville, Tennessee locations, or you can call Matt McWhirter at 931-245-4274. Reach out to Matt McWhirter on email at matt, M-A-T-T, dot M-C-W-H-I-R-T-E-R at myfmbank.com and ask him how you can apply for your home loan right online. Contact Matt McWhirter at FM Bank for your home loan or refinancing needs at FM Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Are you moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky? Well, then you need to know the hottest real estate agent in the Tuckasee markets is Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky, getting stationed at Fort Campbell, or being transferred to another base from Fort Campbell and need to sell your home, Felicia Long Grant aligns herself with champions and delivers excellence. Ask her about the hottest properties now available in the market at Wellington Fields and the soon-to-be Stonehurst development. Call Felicia Long at 931-206-4980. That's 931-206-4980. Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams, aligning herself with champions and delivering excellence. This is Fletcher Long, and we all go through times when we need a little help from a friend. Some of us have seen the blue lights in the rear view. Others of us have been lucky. Who are you going to call when your luck runs out? When your relationship sours? or when another problem arises necessitating a lawyer's help. Here's a hint, it better be the very best. If in that situation, the decision to me is clear, I am calling attorney Lynn Morton. Competence, diligence, skill and tenacity are 10 digits away. Call 931-906-0000 and ask for Lynn Morton. From divorce to DUI, from criminal defense to contract, one call does it all. 931-906-0000 931-906-0000 gets you Lynn Morton. She'll get your ox out of the ditch and put your feet back on the street. Lynn Morton, 931-906-0000. Call her. From criminal defense to contracts, from divorce to child custody, from military law to asset forfeiture, at the law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, We know that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good people just get caught up in bad situations and need someone to navigate them through a frightening and daunting system. The Law Office of Kimberly Turner & Associates will stand beside you and guide you through your most trying ordeals. Call her office at 931-572-1134 or check out the full array of offered services by going to kturnerlaw.com. That's the law office of Kimberly Turner and Associates, 931-572-1134, because they are the law firm who cares. There is nothing worse than being taken in a home buy. Should have had that property inspected and by someone with integrity who would do it thoroughly and correctly. Should have had Z-Best Inspection Services. Don't let this happen to you. Call Z-Best Inspection Services at 931-980-5759 and ask for Bud Wink. The home is the most expensive and important investment the American family makes in a lifetime. You really don't want anyone inspecting it other than Z-Best. That is Z-Best Inspection Services. 931-980-5759. Write this down. 931-980-5759. 
5759. Bud Wink is called the best inspection services because he is the best. The best inspection services changing the quality of home inspections one house at a time. You're getting all version. I just got a text message from Zoe, or actually a Facebook message that says, my name is pronounced Zoe, you brain-dead dead sister-screwing Kentucky hack. <laughs> yep. Hey, yep, that's her. That's hey, her, made a friend. <laughs> made a friend. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we have the uh, comedy stylings of Schwartzy and Pagana. Um, and Andy, I've got to I've got to ask you a question. You you once you once were quoted as saying that everyone is out for themselves and no one will return a favor. So if you do something nice for someone, oh make sure you're doing That's it because you want to. I've been talking about Schwartzy. <laughs> you have, so that was about Schwartzy? Because I had that oh, uh, that was my next, that was my next uh, question. A different Schwartzy. Wait, <laughs> Is is that the Holly? Is, is that the Hollywood you found? A Hollywood where everybody seems to be out for their own agenda, and if you're going to do something nice, do it because really, uh, because because you want to, and not because you expect anything from it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, boy, I mean, the quote sounds really angry and bitter, and it probably it probably was, <laughs> it probably was but I think the gist is what I'm just saying. Yeah, it's like you see a lot of people who give up a lot of time. Um, or, you know, whatever it is to try to get something back. And I think, like, if you're going to do that for the most part, you can't expect it. You just got to, you know, do something. If you're going to work for free or do it because you want to do it and work with people that you want to work for because, you know, there's a big chance that you're not going to get anything out of it other than the experience. And if you're not happy and you're not finding the joy in what you're doing, you're going you're gonna to be miserable. Do you know where I got that quote, Andy? No. You were in your confession. <laughs> you were in confession at the Catholic Church, and I slipped a mic up. On, on, I'm, really, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Let me just say. There's a lot of other shit I got on that recording that, that I'm not releasing, and let that be a, a bit of a stern warning to you that I better be treated very well in your commentary about this show, or I will release the rest. <laughs> well, don't, don't read my Twitter, then. <laughs> you've already you've already tweeted out some stuff about me and you golly i can't believe this but, but like i think you know for example like look at steve joiner who actually got us you know who connected you with us i mean he's not doing it he didn't do it for he us. only asked for 20 percent of uh, <laughs> what you're paying which yeah, is that's pretty fair which I, yeah. i'll give him wait, 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 I'll I'll give you 100% of what I'm paying you. <laughs> we want double. <laughs> you know, but here's a guy who's just like, you know, it's just, he's doing it to, he wanted, he thought we were funny and he likes us and he's fans and he, you know, he likes you, he likes you a lot. And he just thought we would, you know, do something good together. And I, I, uh, I think you just kind of, you know, have to expect that, you know, uh, in what you're doing that you really need to just do something because you really want to do it. Cause otherwise um, if it's not reciprocated or, or if people don't give back to you the way you feel like you're giving out, man, you're going to get, you're going to get crushed and it's going to happen a lot. Well, I think that the comment that everybody is out for themselves is unfortunate, but pretty true, isn't it? I mean, it, it it's, it's kind of a reality of, you know, being a comedian, and I want to ask you this: being a comedian, you you're making a particularly true commentary about the human condition. You're kind of a sociologist, and yeah, we, laugh. Began to do. Yeah. we we laugh sometimes because we're uncomfortable because some of what you're saying is just entirely true. Basically, yeah. basically, I'm saying you two guys are just not funny. Uh, no, I <laughs> just make people uncomfortable. Yeah, I just, I've, been, yeah. I've been uncomfortable. This entire interview, I'm sitting on pins and needles. You know, I'm very uncomfortable, and I'm laughing out of this. No, I'm kidding. You're very... I'm sitting on Schwartz's lap. 
and and I, you know, it, that's the on. that's the bad part about having FaceTime is I can see what you're doing, and it's making me uncomfortable. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I'm like a perfect example. All right, so every Thanksgiving, Fort and I give out pies for for Thanksgiving. We go and we buy thirty pies. Thirty pies. Thirty pies, and we drive around to all our. Maybe I shouldn't talk about that. What? <laughs> I don't know. But we drive around to all our friends, and we give and some strangers. Yeah. And we give away these very expensive pies. We spend all day, and we spend hundreds of our own dollars. Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on doing this, and. It's it's about seventeen hours, I think the last day was right. Oh yeah, we started at like eight a.m. and we we're done at one in the morning. Yeah, and you know, some people like I feel like so many people aren't even thankful. They're just like, oh, I boy, I wanted an apple pie instead of. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, like your last last time. Yeah, you know, we're doing something like you know, philanthropic in a way. We're bringing joy to people. That's that's the reason we do it. It's fun. You know, it's, it's it, you show up with a pie, everybody's happy. But it brings out, in certain people, it brings out this greed side where it's like, we're getting these messages, where's my pie? Where's my pie? <laughs> yeah. I, want, I, want two, I wanted two pies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we anger more people than we do make people happy. Oh, yeah. And then we see them later. I didn't get a pie. I didn't get this bitter. I might never get a pie. Like, you live in, like, Arizona. Like, we just drive right out there. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, we, we think people would be, you know, happy. I feel like there's only one one house the last time that like they didn't care about the pie and it was just more about us and inviting us in yeah. you know and, and spending time with them and everyone else was just my pie my pie yeah it's really like they grabbed the pie and then they slammed the door in the face. <laughs> you know i'm really yeah, we'll be about it this year. i'm glad y'all brought this up because i did not get a pie you didn't get a pie oh i did not get a pie and uh, <laughs> where where in the hell is my pie <laughs> it I, have, I am. At, I, I think I've missed out on the slice of the pie. I, absolutely. Um, <laughs> well, first Steve Joyner took twenty percent of the pie. Yes, he took. Yeah, I only had three quarters of a pie left, and and I. I yeah, you know how it, we it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even the right fruit. It's not the fruit I like in a pie anyway. You know what? Why? What made y'all send me mincemeat? Because that pie sucks. <laughs> well, that started out as fruit. It just uh, sat out too long. <laughs> oh, yeah. It just smells like mint meat. Yeah. <laughs> Who do y'all think is the funniest comedian you've ever seen work? I think Pagana. Pagana. <laughs> Pagana. I, I would <laughs> say, say before. She says Pagana. <laughs> Wait, of all times or now? Of all time. Who's the funniest guy you've ever seen? The funniest? Funniest guy. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Peter O'Toole. That's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Peter O'Toole is pretty funny. He's funny. He didn't know it. He's just funny about trying. He, is, yeah. he's, he had wit. My favorite is probably Laurel and Hardy. I think I laughed the most at those guys. Um, Curly Howard is pretty funny. Curly, yeah. Curly will do anything to make you laugh. Yeah. I always responded to Groucho Marx because I liked the uh, zingers. I've always liked yeah. the, uh, the, the witticism. Yeah, Groucho <laughs> is brilliant. And, I got to tell you the greatest Groucho Marx story I ever heard, if you don't mind. Groucho, now my dad said he witnessed this, but Groucho had a, a show, the Groucho Marx show. Bet your life. Uh, yeah, and oh. well, or you bet your life, whatever it was, but it was kind of, you know, he'd interview people. You, you bet your life. We own the duck from that show. He, he would interview people, and he had this guy on that had like this insane number of kids, like 20 kids or something. And you know, Groucho was always... He was he was always working his cigar, you know, when he was talking, and and he said he said how how in the world do you have this many kids? And the guy goes, well, I love my wife. He said, I love this cigar, but I take it out every now and again. Well, in <laughs> in the fifties in the fifties, this was not an illusion that you, with which you could get away. And they went straight. Right. My dad says that thing went to blank screen the second those words came out of his mouth. <laughs> that they were wow. off air. Just off air, it was just a blank screen. Um, yeah, that's the thing. Back then, they had to be smarter about their comedy because you had to hide all the innuendos and things. So, yeah, uh, you know, nowadays a comedian can be crude. Yeah, we'll just say it and have shock value, and you know, you get attention for that. But like, it, that's that's cheap and easy. But back in the day, man, that was hard. Hey, so we, we like to do that. If you watch our motion picture review show, we try to work that kind of comedy in. 
we didn't uh, we didn't learn what the true uh, use of a cigar was until 1996, anyway. And <laughs> little little did we know that the cigar had a myriad of uses. We knew that. Maybe maybe you guys. Yeah, is that is that what happened? You, hey, Bill, you know what you can do with this cigar? Well, let me tell you what you can do with it. <laughs> you didn't do that to the intern in that video, did you? <laughs> Our intern Chris Pacheco, how long we been <laughs> Have y'all ever? One of my favorite compliments slash insults was this is before before we started doing it. You know, kind of as a team. We, this was just us. And it'd be like us going out to dinner with these two characters because it's just who we are. And we had this friend, Hunter Ellis, who we had just taken to see a Marx Brothers movie. And, and afterwards, you know, we're all sitting down and he's trying to tell a story. And towards he's saying something and I'm saying something. And he, he says another line. Towards he says, like, he goes, going out to dinner with you two is like going out to dinner with two Groucho Marxes. <laughs> Three Groucho Marxes. <laughs> and we were like, there's only two of us. He's like, I know. That's how annoying you are. <laughs> Do you do you guys remember the the television show on cable television where they would play this old like B rated move old movie that was not a big budget move they'd play this old film and this guy and his chicken head would make these quips all through the film. Uh, no, <laughs> no, but we're already fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't remember this show? I mean, it was it was it, 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 they would play some just off the wall science fiction movie, and then these. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It was Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Yeah, oh, Mystery. Oh, was the guy would be watching the movie the whole time? Yeah, they and they'd be making these quips. I would. I, that's oh, kind yeah, of what. Yeah, you, yeah. That's kind of your movie reviews. I mean, that that was what came to my mind when I was watching your movie reviews. It it reminded me of Mystery Science Theater three thousand or whatever the name of that was. Yeah, we would love to do something like that. Though. Yeah, we yeah. also have iconic silhouettes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and and Muppets. Actually, yeah. Tell us, tell us about your Muppets. Don't you guys have Muppets? Puppets? You have puppets or oh, something? Do, yeah. That, yeah, we have sports. If we get a puppet, yeah, we can't use the word Muppets as trademark Disney. Look, I think this is like outside the door right now. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> well, I, I read on there. I mean, I'm I'm reading about you know dressing up like the '40s comedy teams, and um, I'm re you know I read about you guys have developed a bunch of puppets, uh, and you know, and 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 I'm I'm thinking about your television show, The Nonsense Box, and. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah. you guys, you guys were really studs in high school, weren't you? Oh yeah. <laughs> Am I right? I mean, you guys, you, you both dated the captain of the cheerleader squad with that shtick. I know you did. Wait, wait, wait. You went to high school? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I did not. Well, no. But I, I have a feeling that we would have all, we we all three would have been in the same locker at one point or another. <laughs> Schwartz is dating the, the head of the cheerleaders right now. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, Schwartzy. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> my high school sweetheart. <laughs> She's in high school. <laughs> I mean, did the other kids growing up with you, I mean, did, did are you guys like incredibly good fighters? <laughs> I'm, I'm fast. I'm fast. Fast with my tongue and fast with my feet. Yeah. But that does help. And and uh, fast with the lady. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. No, no, but I'm no seriously because you know we're you know we're the same. You know I have a very smart mouth and y'all do too. I mean we're smart. We're kind of smart, Alex. That's not easy growing up in a, a society uh, the way we are. I mean, were there ever any issues growing up? I had no issues. I, I think if you make people laugh, even if they're big bullies, yeah, they, they don't. I I had a lot of people looking at me like. I don't know what to make it is, because they would walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I would find the biggest, toughest guy, and I would just go up there, and I would just rib him. I would just give him, like, the biggest jokes, the dumbest jokes. Yeah. And uh, it can get you into and out of a lot of trouble. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this question. How many people that you, that you uh, grew up with in your hometown are sitting back going, I knew this is what they were going to do? I mean, was it always <laughs> Uh, because, hey, hey, the second I got convicted, well, of, hey, hey, the second I got convicted of a felony, everybody in my hometown was like, "Yep, we knew it." No, wait, <laughs> wait what, is it true? What did you do? Like, what uh, did you do? 
I, I didn't do anything. I was I was completely innocent. No, I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so sees everybody. Yeah, I'll let you you can read about it. But anyway, how many people are sitting back in your hometown saying, "I knew that they would do this." I you know I don't have a clue. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember as a kid, I you know I would go to school dressed as Oliver Hardy or wear derby or something. So and I'm sure that it's you were really cool. You were really cool. I'm going to tell you that would have yeah, been really cool. so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kentucky, you get beat down. You get beat down for less than that where I'm from. Let me just say that. Oh, go, yeah, yeah, no, I had no problems. But <laughs> you know, I, I always actually wanted to be part of a 1940s comedy team and didn't actually ever believe it would happen because how could that ever happen? <laughs> and look, dreams do come true, and I'm miserable. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta go to break. <laughs> we gotta go. He doesn't want to be here right now. Hey, we gotta go to break. But you're getting the long version of two of two. Hey, uh, hey Fletcher, Fletcher, yeah. Fletcher. Yeah. We have to take a break. So. Oh yeah. Right, yeah take a break. Take a break. Put on break. A commercial or something. You take a break. I take a. Break. We're gonna put on some commercials. You're getting uh, the long version of Schwartzy and Pagana on iRadio USA. Moving to Clarksville, being stationed at Fort Campbell or just moving to the Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky areas. Go see my friend Matt McWhirter in the mortgage division of f and Bank. Matt and f and are in the American dream business and they want to help your family achieve the American dream. They are located at 15 different Clarksville, Tennessee locations or you can call Matt McWhirter at 931-245-4274. Reach out to Matt McWhirter on email at matt, M-A-T-T, dot, M-C-W-H-I-R-T-E-R, at myfmbank.com, and ask him how you can apply for your home loan right online. Contact Matt McWhirter at f Bank for your home loan or refinancing needs at f Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Are you moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky? Well, then you need to know the hottest real estate agent in the Tuckasee markets is Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky, getting stationed at Fort Campbell, or being transferred to another base from Fort Campbell and need to sell your home, Felicia Long Grant aligns herself with champions and delivers excellence. Ask her about the hottest properties now available in the market at Wellington Fields and the soon-to-be Stonehurst development. Call Felicia Long at 931-206-4980. That's 931-206-4980. Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams, aligning herself with champions and delivering excellence. From criminal defense to contracts, from divorce to child custody, from military law to asset forfeiture, At the law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, we know that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good people just get caught up in bad situations and need someone to navigate them through a frightening and daunting system. The law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates will stand beside you and guide you through your most trying ordeals. Call her office at 931-572-1134 or check out the full array of offered services by going to kturnerlaw.com. That's the law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, 931-572-1134, because they are the law firm who cares. This is Fletcher Long, and we all go through times when we need a little help from a friend. Some of us have seen the blue lights in the rear view. Others of us have been lucky. Who are you going to call when your luck runs out, when your relationship sours, or when another problem arises necessitating a lawyer's help? Here's a hint. It better be the very best. If in that situation, the decision to me is clear, I am calling Attorney Lynn Morton. Competence, diligence, skill, and tenacity are 10 digits away. Call 931-906-0000 and ask for Lynn Morton. From divorce to DUI, from criminal defense to contract, one call does it all. 931-906-0000 gets you Lynn Morton. 
She'll get your ox out of the ditch and put your feet back on the street. Lynn Morton, 931-906-0000. Call her. There is nothing worse than being taken in a home buy. Should have had that property inspected and by someone with integrity who would do it thoroughly and correctly. Should have had Z-Best Inspection Services. Don't let this happen to you. Call Z-Best Inspection Services at 931-980-5759 and ask for Bud Wink. The home is the most expensive and important investment the American family makes in a lifetime. You really don't want anyone inspecting it other than Z-Best. That is Z-Best Inspection Services, 931-980-5759. Write this down, 931-980-5759. Bud Wink is called Z-Best Inspection Services because he is Z-Best. Z-Best Inspection Services, changing the quality of home inspections One house at a time. You're getting the long version, and here's to hoping that 2017 is better than 2016 because 2016 kind of sucked. We've got the comedy team of Schwartz and Pagana, but you guys had a great 2016. Mine mine was a bit wanting, a bit wanting. It was our best year. Best year. We had a good year. We went to Bulgaria. Oh, yeah. Schwartz and Pagana were uh, brought out to Bulgaria by the U.S. Embassy. Um, to perform comedy there. To bring comedy to Bulgarians. Here's what we learned. There's a country called Bulgaria. Are, are, is, there any chance, is there any chance that we're at war with Bulgaria? There's no, chance. <laughs> There's no doubt. The Queen of Bulgaria, not a fan. Yeah, did not like the pie we brought her. So are you guys headed... <laughs> Are you guys headed to Morocco next? Let me ask this question. Have y'all ever seen the movie Ishtar and do you love it? Oh, fuck, do we love it? Of course we love it. Actually, we do love that movie. We love it. I do too. I do too. Whether or not you whether or not you appreciate the movie Ishtar is really a litmus test for, for intelligence quotient. It really is. If you don't love Ishtar yeah. And Ernest goes to jail. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, yeah that guy was for me. That guy was a comedic genius. I actually could book him on the show. <laughs> You'd, have, <laughs> You'd like to see me pull that off, huh? <laughs> We'd like to see that. You should interview John Cherry, who directed every single thing Ernest did. Yeah. Somebody should interview him. Well, I mean. If you don't, we're going to. I'm going to. Uh, let me tell you this. For that guy to make a living in entertainment for all those years, from the purity commercials forward, yeah. That that took some branding, and and you know you guys are are pretty uh, adept. Did you say brandy, branding, yeah, no brandy, yes. Oh, it, branding. It, I think it's a, a special type of brandy, straight from Peter O'Toole's personal stash. <laughs> <laughs> hey Fletcher, who's the most famous person you've had on your show, other than us? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I mean that's a good question. Um, I've had a lot of. Yes, uh, very, very good. You guys have gotten the job. Um, I'm probably the most significant person that I've had on the show is either Jack O'Halloran or George Christie. Uh, and maybe I have to give... Oh, I have to... I have to well, you, you may not know who George Christie is, but have you ever seen the, the show, The Outlaw Chronicles, on the History oh. Channel? Never seen it, huh? Uh, George Christie was the head of the Hells Angels motorcycle gang. He was president of the chapter in Los Angeles and in Ventura, and he was the international spokesman for Hells Angels. And he wrote a book. Is he a comedy he, fan? Yes. We love and you, George. He, hey, he's just he's just funny as hell. Nobody nobody could order your hit any funnier than George Christie could back in the. <laughs> Uh, we want to be your Hollywood correspondents. We're going to do like weekly segments that we send in to you. Oh, yeah. Can we review movies for you? Absolutely. No, that's going straight on air. I'm going straight to air with that. Absolutely. Uh, but I take like five minutes off your time. 
Absolutely. Daddy. You don't I'm need fine to. with that. I'm, my show's dragging anyway, guys. I'm hanging on by a thread here. Oh, we know. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> you couldn't help but notice. But, you know, when I'm interviewing George Christie and he starts talking about arranging the security for the uh, at Altamont for the Rolling Stones concert, I remember thinking to myself, this is a freaking historically significant guy. Uh, now, yeah. you know, where he ranks in the fame meter or not, you know, who knows? But he's significant. You know, his life has been, he's impacted a lot of lives, some negatively, but some positively. Yeah. Didn't people die there? <laughs> At Altamont? They might have roughed yeah, up. I can't. I think they, it wasn't it wasn't Kent State, but it it was it wasn't a Garden Club meeting either. I mean, it was it was kind of rough. I think some people died. I'm not answering well, that. Question. It happened. We died I, on stage before. I'm calling one of the lawyers that's in, that's in my retinue of advertisers, and I'm not going to answer that question. Um, <laughs> Good answer. But I would say we began a live show. We never killed, but we always died. <laughs> Hey, I, I would say that you guys are, are, are famous, so I would have to put you up say there. say that, too. And, you know, it says that on our business card and our billboard that was in Denver, Colorado. Oh, yeah. We had a billboard well, that as says, well as the picture, famous. As well as the picture I tweeted out on Facebook, I put out on Twitter and Facebook. Um, I think Lisa Wilcox, too. I didn't, I didn't ask. You know, you know who Lisa Wilcox is? Oh, Lisa. Oh, yeah. No, she, she was at Nightmare on Elm Street four and five, but four and five were were particularly popular submissions in the in the franchise of Nightmare on Elm Street, and she was the real pretty blonde that you saw nude in the shower get sucked down the drain by Freddy Krueger. Oh. Oh, I knew you boys. I knew you would know her now. I knew you would know her now because that's one of the you know what that was that was that was the only reason some of us watched that movie. Was because we knew that we were going to see her naked, and that you know, back in the eighties, I'm talking about that was some one reason. And I'm very proud of the fact that I interviewed her and didn't ask her one question about that scene. What? That would have been my first question. Yeah. <laughs> You're, uh, you're a well, better man than I. I didn't want her to think I, I was, was like stalking her or anything. So even though I've been stalking her since the late eighties, no, I'm kidding. David Letterman would have asked. Did you ask Larry Wilcox about his new scene? <laughs> Hey, I had another Hey, I had Larry Wilcox on too. I forgot. I, I don't want to. all the Wilcoxes on. Yes, the entire. Yes, yes, they will, and I do. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I had them on, uh, but you know, I think a lot of people that I've had on are either famous or are going to be, and I, I firmly believe that. We do too. Yep, we do. Too. The only reason we agreed to this. Well, I think. And the pay. And the $400 I, you owe. Oh, yeah. I think, I think you two, you two are the only entertainment act that I've had on to date that is absolutely going no freaking where. <laughs> Thank you. Fair enough. Everybody <laughs> else, <laughs> you guys, I can do nothing for you. You know, the eight influential people that are listening to this show right now, which are comprised of my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, and my aunt are going to be able to do nothing with you. Hey, I know we're streaming live on, on your Facebook Live channel, and so I want to thank we you were. for that. We were. We're not we were, but uh, it got canceled. <laughs> we got done. <laughs> you were the only one watching. You're supposed to be asking a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got dumped off your Facebook channel. How uh, how noteworthy. That me and Peter O'Toole. <laughs> yeah, right. We, kept, we got sick of answering the same question. Who's Fletcher Long? <laughs> so we up. Well, I still don't yeah. know. <laughs> well, well, I never promised you a rose garden. Uh, uh, how did hey, you? When we drive across country to go to New York from LA, which we'll be doing soon. Yes. Can we stop into Kentucky and do a live show? Absolutely, I'd love to have you. I, you know, okay, as, long as, we, as long as we can do it like in super secret private, because I don't want anybody to see me with you. Right. Uh, so we want our own room at your house to sleep. Yes. We want separate beds. We sleep in separate bed. Yeah, but we put them together. I'm scared. I'm scared you might be recognized by people that have seen your your uh, comedy routine. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'd love for you guys to come to Kentucky. How did y'all come up with the name Orson Spielcock the <laughs> Third? Well, I mean, so let's break it down. So we wanted to have a a fake famous director in our world. So we took Orson Welles. Uh, Steven Spielberg and Alfred Hitchcock, and we mashed them up, and Orson Spielcock. And then, of course, 
It's the third because it's is you know it's the son of Orson Spielcock. Third, the grand. Oh yeah, the grandson of the great Orson Spielcock, and he's not so good actually. He's not a great director, Orson Spielcock the third. Yeah, <laughs> and we're talking about the real person. You, you know, you know, when y'all went into that explanation, I, I was pretty sure on Orson and Spiel, but I was a little afraid of the of, of what cock was going to be. <laughs> so, uh, I, you knew what cock was. Yeah, you know cock. I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. to know it's the last half of Hitchcock. I'm I'm <laughs> happy to know that. The other the other character we have in our world, which we don't use enough, is uh, Angelina Foxberry. Oh right, who's like a, a classic like uh, uh, sexy actress, you know, famous movie star, which comes from Angelina Jolie. Uh, uh, Megan, Megan, Fox, Megan Fox and Halle Berry. So Angelina Fox Berry. Yes. Who do you think is... And then Blackface Charlie. Yeah, you know about Blackface Charlie, right? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Did you see among, our, our Dark Knight Rises review? Uh, among, among your friends, who do you think... Who do you think they are? No, who do you think uh, is probably the most famous friends you have? Is, is, is it Rachel, perhaps? Who is it? Nah, Rachel. Uh, <laughs> our famous friend? I think she's pretty famous. I think she's been in a lot of stuff. I'm very impressed by her. Well, for your audience, yeah, probably maybe Zoe Bell and, and Rachel Nichols. I mean, I mean, Cody Johns is. Oh yeah, friend. Cody Marcus. Oh yeah, we have, uh, we have Cody John. Cody John, media I, guy. Yeah, I loved what y'all did with him. I I watched your. Uh, uh, videos uh, with Cody Johns, or I, I don't know, Andy, was that the two of you, or was that just you? Well, I, I did some stuff with him, but me and Schwartzy did a lot with it. We, we, he started putting us on his channel, um, on his Facebook, so we did a short that kind of introduced why, he, he did this experiment where he wanted more videos on his channel, he was like, well, I'm going to produce some, and I can't be in everything, but I want to put up content, and he, he's a huge fan. Yeah, we don't get it. We don't get it. He's popular. He's a cool guy. Yeah, young, good looking. And he's like, I want you two old guys. Like, uh, this is not your audience, but um, yeah. So we we it was a failed experiment, but uh, we gave, we all gave it our best. And uh, so we did uh, we did comedy with him, and he's really funny. He's really he plays a great straight man. Uh, you know, against you, George and Pagana. You you know the video where you stole his dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, that and, you he's and, you, and, and and you type the ransom note <laughs> and misspelled his last name. <laughs> yeah, it's classic, man. Just classic. Yeah, uh, it's classic. yeah. it is classic. Yeah. But yeah. It'll stand the test of time. That's based on a true story. <laughs> oh yeah, we didn't know there were cameras there. <laughs> Well, no, that guy's really hot, though. I mean, he's he's very popular. Oh, it, yeah, you just see him with his shirt up. <laughs> <laughs> he's ripped. He's ripped. He is ripped. No, he's he's very very popular. Him and his brother are very popular. But uh, I mean, Shane Black is a friend. We go to his house a lot. Oh yeah, he gives us shout outs. He's directing the new Predator movie. Like he's a very very famous director. Who else? Uh, Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez, who who directed uh, the Evil Dead remake and just had a. Uh, Oh, that movie that came out was huge. I forgot what it was the, called. Yeah, uh, Hush. No, Silence. It was called Hush. No, that's Martin Scorsese. Oh, <laughs> no, not that one. The one that's about the house. Is I know it? what it's called. Is it called I Hush? No, it's just, <laughs> it's not called Hush. Hold on. What's it called? There. You don't do that. Someone like lights out or something like that. I don't know. No one knows. Oh, yeah. Called. Keep quiet. Anyway, it was a big hit. We loved it. <laughs> well done, Fede Alvarez. So if I... If I call, if if I called any one of these guys and they actually took my call, which which we know they wouldn't, they would admit to knowing you. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, they would deny they were fans, but they would know who we are. Yeah. I would say on our street, uh, this this street where there's a bunch of stores where Vitello's, where Robert Blake killed his wife. There's a one shop called Coyote, and they have a wanted sign with our faces on it. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, for handing out uh, fake coupons. Coupon. <laughs> if you meet George Bagana, there's a good chance you're going to get a 20% off coupon. At whatever restaurant you want to go to. Yeah, it says you get 20% off at this restaurant. That means wherever you go, it's good at this restaurant. Uh, it's fucked some havoc on our street. We get a lot of trouble for that one. Yeah. Um, we know Is it? Yeah, we know, we know a lot of people. J.K. Simmons is a big fan. Oh, he's a huge fan. We see him all the time. Neighbor of ours. Yeah. He, yeah. Uh, we worked with him on Saving Detroit. Oh, yeah. We're Saving Detroit with him. Now you guys also work a lot in production. You you write scripts. Uh, you write. You yeah. you screenwrite. You're multi talented. Oh yes, we are. Oh. We so many talents. <laughs> you have no idea how many. Comedy, <laughs> not one of them. 
I once ate six pies in seven minutes. Oh, that's not that contest. That was a contest. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to suddenly suggest. I'm, I'm trying to suddenly suggest that y'all should do something else uh, other than comp. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> J.K. Simmons uh, was it, it. It. I. I loved his work in um, where he played the inmate. Uh, what was the name? Uh, you know, Oz. Oz. Man, he was. Of course, I did. I did. I didn't. I didn't watch much Oz because I was under indictment at the time, and and watching the show was a painful reminder that I could end up with a cellmate like J.K. Simmons, which I absolutely didn't. Just stare at a mirror. <laughs> you know, you know what happened to that lawyer that went to prison. So we didn't want to. Oh, yeah. You know, we didn't want to return to that. Guys, we've got to. We've got to take our last break. I hope you will forgive me. Oh, come on. I you know you another need- ad for Kimberly Turner and Associates. Yes, I am, and she's fantastic. Because right, I want to call her because it says if bad things happen to you, call her. And, Please uh, call her. Talk to her about the radio show we were on recently. <laughs> she would be so jazzed if you called her. No kidding. Oh, you're getting. You're right, getting. I'm going to call her. Please do it. You're getting the long version. Tell her she needs to pay me more money. You're getting the long version hey, of Schwartz and Pagana. Is she single? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, of course, he's definitely going to call her. I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> Back after these messages. Moving to Clarksville, being stationed at Fort Campbell, or just moving to the Middle Tennessee, Southern Kentucky areas, go see my friend Matt McWhirter in the mortgage division of FM Bank. Matt and FM are in the American Dream business, and they want to help your family achieve the American Dream. They are located at 15 different Clarksville, Tennessee locations. Or you can call Matt McWhirter at 931-245-4274. Reach out to Matt McWhirter on email at matt, M-A-T-T, dot M-C-W-H-I-R-T-E-R at myfmbank.com. And ask him how you can apply for your home loan right online. Contact Matt McWhirter at FNM Bank for your home loan or refinancing needs at FNM Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Are you moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky? Well, then you need to know the hottest real estate agent in the Tuckasee markets is Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Moving to either Tennessee or Kentucky, getting stationed at Fort Campbell, or being transferred to another base from Fort Campbell and need to sell your home. Felicia Long Grant aligns herself with champions and delivers excellence. Ask her about the hottest properties now available in the market at Wellington Fields and the soon-to-be Stonehurst development. Call Felicia Long at 931-206-4980. That's 931-206-4980. Felicia Long Grant for Keller Williams. Aligning herself with champions and delivering excellence. From criminal defense to contracts, from divorce to child custody, from military law to asset forfeiture, at the law office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, we know that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Sometimes good people just get caught up in bad situations and need someone to navigate them through a frightening and daunting system. The Law Office of Kimberly Turner & Associates will stand beside you and guide you through your most trying ordeals. Call her office at 931-572-1134 or check out the full array of offered services by going to kturnerlaw.com. That's the Law Office of Kimberly Turner & Associates, 931-572-1134 because they are the law firm who cares? This is Fletcher Long, and we all go through times when we need a little help from a friend. Some of us have seen the blue lights in the rear view. Others of us have been lucky. Who are you going to call when your luck runs out, when your relationship sours, or when another problem arises necessitating a lawyer's help? Here's a hint. It better be the very best. If in that situation, the decision to me is clear, I am calling Attorney Lynn Morton. Competence, diligence, skill, and tenacity are 10 digits away. Call 931-906-0000 and ask for Lynn Morton. 
From divorce to DUI, from criminal defense to contract, one call does it all. 931-906-0000 gets you Lynn Morton. She'll get your ox out of the ditch and put your feet back on the street. Lynn Morton, 931-906-0000. Call her. There is nothing worse than being taken in a home buy. Should have had that property inspected and by someone with integrity who would do it thoroughly and correctly. Should have had Z-Best Inspection Services. Don't let this happen to you. Call Z-Best Inspection Services at 931-980-5759 and ask for Bud Wink. The home is the most expensive and important investment the American family makes in a lifetime. You really don't want anyone inspecting it other than Z-Best. That is Z-Best Inspection Services, 931-980-5759. Write this down, 931-980-5759. Bud Wink is called Z-Best Inspection Services because he is Z-Best. Z-Best Inspection Services, changing the quality of home inspections one house at a time. You're getting the long version of Schwartzy and Pagana, and there's no telling what these nuts are up to now. What are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, Fletcher, we're on with uh, Kathleen Turner, or what's her name? Kimberly Turner and Associates right now. Oh, uh, you are? Brittany. Yeah, Brittany, say hi to Fletcher Long. Hi, Fletcher. Hey, Brittany. Can how you are you doing? How, yes, I can hear her. Did you tell Brittany that you're in Hollywood, California, and you're on their, their program? Oh, she knows. She's a big fan. Yeah, she's a huge fan. Brittany, She's going to be uh, an entertainment lawyer because we murdered that entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, I'm telling you, uh, listen, listen to me carefully. You, your career is now over. You have now been. <laughs> no. Hold on. Now, Brittany, Brittany is going to audition to be our receptionist right now. Okay. All Brittany, right. Let's hear. All right. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Ring, ring. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't quite get it down earlier. You'll have to. Okay. Here Brittany. it is. Brittany. Uh, Schwartzy. Sorry, sorry, folks. Uh, Brittany's embarrassing us right now, but we're getting on together right now. <laughs> you're not doing very well, Brittany. Brittany, you're not doing very well. Hey, so don't play much. She's 21. From Kentucky. Okay, you ready? We're doing this, Fletcher. This is All right, let's do it. You got this number from your show. The advertising works, obviously. You got to sell some bags. Okay, here we go. Okay, and ring, ring. Yeah. yeah, Brittany, you got the job. Brittany, well, uh, very well done. I think I think she gets the part. Okay, you I think it's in a headshot. A yeah, full body shot. Uh, <laughs> get the headshot. It's in the full body shot. And Sports will give you a part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brittany, we want to put you in something. Then we're gonna put. Oh, uh, wait a minute. We're on the end. Uh, Brittany, we want to put you in something. No, I'll do it. Brittany, we want to put you in something, and then we want to put something in you. Oh. <laughs> Say, All right, Brittany, say goodbye. Tell uh, tell Kimberly Turner we want to talk to her later. All right. I'll tell her when she gets back in. All right. Okay, we love you. Thank you. See ya. You. We like that skirt today. Oh, okay. you're looking good. Nice damn. But you should shave. Talk about your legs up. Okay. Wow. Sorry about that, Fletcher. We had to do a little business. That's okay. No. Uh, Kimberly Turner is a really and a very good friend of mine and a very good attorney, and she will love you guys. I'm not – I wait, mean, wait, there's – Wait, wait, she's a woman, and she's an attorney? <laughs> yes. Fletcher, you're hilarious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who the fuck it? Who the fuck it? Uh, no, she's she's a she's a tiger. She's really tough. And, uh, oh, she, I'm going to give her a cougar. And I, don't, I, I already know where your minds are going to take this, but she can give it just yeah. as she, – she can give it as, uh, and take it, too, whatever that uh, – uh, <laughs> That, too easy. That, too that, easy. That sound good. That, that didn't sound good. Yeah. <laughs> she couldn't get on the phone because she was actually in court. Uh, well, that's right. She's a she's a big time trial attorney. That's right. Yeah, she was uh, showing her briefs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I think she'll show you her own griefs. I, you know, know it, Kimberly. Uh, but anyway, I don't know what that means. I'm, I'm getting myself deeper and deeper as I go. Um, guys, what do you have? I had, a, I had a girlfriend once that uh, uh, court. Uh, uh, never mind. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like go. a good idea yeah, when you started. Bigger. Hold on yeah. a second. <laughs> yeah, it's getting no appeal. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's next? What's next for you guys? What are y'all gonna do now? We're gonna get breakfast. And we're gonna go get some eggs and bacon. Oh yeah, bacon. Hey, hey are you uh, guys? Are, you guys are walking around in Hollywood right now, right? Isn't, isn't that right what you? We're walking around, walking around in Hollywood. Hollywood. Is there like? Is there? Because our rickshaw driver didn't show up. Is there a famous person around you? Right now, I mean, like a John Voight uh, or somebody that you could stick a. I mean, there's got to be somebody <laughs> famous. Look, John Wayne. Is well, it? Uh, there you go. <laughs> Somebody say famous people. What about oh, Rick Scott? Sorry, sorry. Is this Fletcher Long? Uh, Fletcher Long, I'm a big fan. Uh, I'll get your show in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from Scotland. I forget. <laughs> Uh, no, everybody's sleeping. This is Hollywood. People don't, the actors don't get up till like noon. Right, Jordan? <laughs> yeah, you lousy bum. Get with Jordan. Our <laughs> best friend. Is it true that there are no waitresses or waiters in Hollywood? We that, haven't slept with that, Yes. Wait, is that true? Is, is that true? That is true. <laughs> what, what's the question? Uh, is, is it true that everybody that's a waiter and waitress in Hollywood's really there trying to, uh, uh, make it in entertainment is is that there's you know that old well saying. we hope so because they're lousy waiters, waiters. yeah they need to focus <laughs> on what they're doing there's got to be something the they're good at because we know, yeah, we know where they struggle <laughs> did you guys did did you guys ever did 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 did, did y'all ever wait tables uh, uh, I did yeah we had tables. I actually enjoyed it I had it's fun because you have like an audience every table you go up to and they can't leave. <laughs> And I just wait at the table. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of controversy over whether or not Pagana would make a good waiter. I would make a great waiter, by the way. I know. Some people say no, because he's too selfish. <laughs> but he claims that he would be a great waiter. Look, uh, I, nobody eats out more than me. Nobody. So okay. Nobody understands what it takes in order to be a good server. Nobody asks for coffee. That's all what your wife said. Well, you got to remember that you got to remember that Pagana is only out for himself. Right, and so you know, it's be hard for him to say. You said that, Fletcher. I'm just a guy not arguing with you. <laughs> what are you trying to do? What are you trying to do, Fletcher? You know, Wake up? Okay, no, <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I can, if I can get rid of one of you, I can take the place of the one that I get cut out of the act. See, I mean, I think a three, I think a three man act is, yeah, is yeah, just. You would deserve it. Yeah. We can't, we can't do a three man act. I've got to get rid of one. I, Whichever one of you wants to form the new team of either Schwartzy and Long or Pagana and Long, you have my number. Yeah, we do a threesome. Like we do with the Three Stooges, like with Curly, Curly's grandson. We do bits with him. Oh, yeah. You know Curly from the Three Stooges? Uh, yes, Curly Howard. I know his grandson, his grandson Brad. Brad. Well. Yeah, I know his grandson Brad. Well, I've talked to him on the phone several times because I plan on having him on. Oh, so. yeah, he talked to us about you. He no. wants us to be on with him. Yeah, and he's not a fan of yours. Not a fan, no. <laughs> Wait, you're Fletcher Long? Oh, yeah, he hates you. <laughs> that's what it's... Yeah, but we're going to do it with him. Okay, that's great. I'd love to, I'd love to have dude, our, our, our assistant, <laughs> Brittany, at the law office of the Kimberly Dirt. <laughs> so, oh, and my so God, you... I'm still getting into this. I'm going to call us at the law office. That's for Brittany. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Hold on, we got a million dollar idea here. With a brilliant idea, it's a million dollars. Oh yeah. I want a piece of this. I want a piece of this. I'm I'm putting this here. I want I want a recording that I get a piece of this because I came up with the idea. It's my story. Fair enough. All right. We'll give you a piece. Fourteen began. Seriously. Now you bill collector. You know I've I've got landlord. I've got five phone calls today that I've just ducked. Since I've been on air, that's how many bill collectors are after me. Oh, we get it. We have some rocks that we just ducked. <laughs> okay, we get it. I just had to move out of my apartment because my landlord wouldn't raise my rent. The landlord wouldn't raise the rent. No, I couldn't raise it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I hate this joke. I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, you did it wrong. You're definitely not doing that's it. That's why I hate it. <laughs> All right, the coffee is just kicking in now. <laughs> now we won't shut up. 
let let me ask you this. Uh, I, I've got to ask you this question. Uh, no. Go ahead. I, I just have to. Do you feel like that you've made your childhood fantasies come true? The one about the three blonde? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever they happen to be. Do you guys feel the, like... The one about the three Lisa Wilcoxes? Yeah, yes, yes. I had that fantasy myself. What, well, what actually, I Actually... Well, well yeah, go on. Well, I guess I'm asking your when you're talking. I'm asking I'm asking you the question, are you where you thought you'd be? To be uh no, that wasn't your question. Did we make our childhood dreams come true? Yeah, that was your question. Well, I mean so that's to be perfectly honest, except for the fame, the fortune and the happiness. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you made I, you made some of the fantasies come true, but just not the most lucrative ones. <laughs> I still haven't swam in a pool filled with corned beef hash yet. <laughs> yes, it'll happen. Do you have a lot of threesomes in LA? <laughs> like there are comedy threesomes, or <laughs> true story? Gorgeous began I almost had a threesome. We did. It was close. Well, we're not going to get into that. Yeah, she escaped. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't you, you could hold her down. Was that what happened? She was able yeah, to uh, get like her it. right out. Yeah. She, uh, she called her mom. And, no, I'm kidding. Every time we uh, eat brunch, we have a threesome because we order enough food for three people. <laughs> and I eat most of it. Yeah. How important is it? <laughs> How important is it that y'all genuinely like each other? Because I would think, you know, you guys clearly do. You're clearly very good. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I dare you, sir. I dare you. Don't spread that rumor. Part of our comedy is based on hating each other. Contractually, we have to hang out with each other. We don't have a choice. Yeah, we signed a lifetime contract. You guys hang out with each other. You guys hang out with each other when you don't have to. And I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask the question. That everybody. We're all we got. This is. I've got to ask the question that everybody on Facebook has been sending in for me to ask. Are you guys lovers? (laughs) Is that really the question? Well, we're not fighters. I only have one we follower. Keep that part of mystery. I have one follower on Facebook. Encourage your fans to write some fortune began a fan fiction. Yeah, and my, uh, we'll perform it. My, my only follower on Facebook wanted to know that. She, she she asked me to ask that, so I, I it wouldn't know. work out because we're both power bottoms. So we just both be sitting there waiting. Well, let me ask you this question. Joe cool. Where is it? Where's Joe Cool? Joe Cool, right in. Both of you guys seem to be, you know, I don't know who the straight man is. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> it's definitely not me. Oh, this entire interview has been rife with double entendre. Had oh, we've been doing triple entendres, triple entendres, all the entendres. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want us to be specific? We're gay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. Oh uh, no, we're gay for coffee. But you and guys are uh, from the. You guys, you guys are a forty. You're you're a forties comedy team. Which means when when you say you you're gay, you mean the nineteen forties circa definition of gay. Oh, which yeah, I've like the Flintstones. Huh? I've caught on. Gay. At, like the Flintstones and Rock Hudson. <laughs> Liberace. Uh, I'm not sure. Rock, I'm, not sure I'm not sure. I'm not sure that Rock Hudson's the example for which you're going. But I'm not, I think that may take you. In the- <laughs> All right, Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> Another interesting choice. I think it's a Freudian uh, event happening here. Anyway, guys, I, I really can't thank you enough for coming on. Uh, this is been- yeah, and yeah. we're not gay, by the way. Yeah. Just to clarify, yeah. Yeah. not gay. Not that there's anything. It's not that there's anything wrong with. It, but they're not oh, no, gay. There's things wrong with that. What are you talking about? This is Kentucky. Yeah. We got pictures. We'll show you what's wrong with that. It's so wrong. <laughs> So Guys, yeah, it always hurts the next day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, for Andy Pagana and uh, uh, CM Schwartzy and the team of uh, Schwartzy and Pagana and all of us here at the Long Version, have a great weekend. Fletcher, thank you for nothing. <laughs> We're out. You're welcome. <laughs> and thanks, Steve Joyner. Oh, thanks, Steve Joyner. You're the best. Thanks for taking my morning. All right, we're out.